Hello everyone, welcome to Pearl Treasure Designs. This is our springtime toys and decor DIY number one. We are getting ready to start this first project and we are making a wood bat toy for decoration or even for self-protection. But here's how we get started. We are making the um, handle and we are burnishing the end of the paracord so we can get ready to braid it together. Okay, and we're gonna do that for about 12 inches of braid to work through the end of our bat as a handle. Okay, so we're just getting started with that and trying to get that ready to go so that we can pin it down and make a nice tight braid out of that. Okay. So clearing out some working space, I'm kind of working it, away, working it out as I go there for my workspace. So the braid is over, under, over, under, um, and the thin paracord uh, is about 3 16 of an inch uh, wide, um, so it's a little hard to work with. But here you go, we're getting ready for that 12 inch uh, handle. And as we get finished to the end here, I do burnish the end with uh, a lighter so that it stays nice and tight, even though we're going to tie it in a knot once we get it through the bat, okay? Um, but I didn't want it to come apart, okay? So there we have uh, the braid about finished. And we're just making sure that it is um, together. Sometimes that paracord wants to come, come apart when it's not melted together uh, correctly, okay? So here we are getting ready to start that bat project, sanding down any of the uh, fibers on the bat that might be sticking up, that might fray off. Um, we want it to be nice and smooth to take a burnishing. And then uh, I'm just checking to make sure it's nice and smooth and there's no uh, splinters anywhere. I'm, I'm also starting here. I am going to put my name on this bat uh, so that, uh, number one, my husband doesn't take it to take out to the garage or my kids. Uh, I made one for each of them as well. And what I did was I marked it out with a colored pencil so I know where to uh, etch in the letters. So it's freehand, but I'm also following a stencil to make it nice and even. My burnishing tool is by Dremel, and you basically just run it along the wood grain to burn the very top layer of the wood uh, so it looks like it's nice and uh, uh, maybe stained or something like that. But I love the look of burned wood. So we're going to do that for a little bit and cover the entire bat with the uh, wood burning tool. I am taking my time with this so that I can get the desired look that I want. Uh, so long, even strokes is best for this and um, wasn't getting a lot of cooperation from my tool, so you'll do better with yours, I'm sure. You don't necessarily have to burnish the edge uh, or the handle part, but that's going to be covered with our paracord handle.
did have a little bit of trouble keeping this on. So uh, you have to hold this unit in. It doesn't stay going uh, unless you lock it in place. Um, it's a safety mechanism. And then we burn the end as well um, so that it matches the rest of the bat. Whereas after the, uh, the hole, it is going to be covered with that paracord um, grip. And this is about finished, and I did also cover this with a clear coat, um, and that took um, about about a day to make sure that it was cured uh, after I was done with it. And now I'm getting ready to uh, etch in uh, my name on this particular bat uh, with a heat tool. And I did use the point uh, end of the heat tool. steady as she goes, making sure the letters are nice and straight, that it didn't burn uh, too much in level, nice even pressure uh, with that heat tool. We've got this in fast forward so you can see what it what it took to get that done and now I'm working the handle grip through there tying a knot and fastening it to the bat, the bat. and now we're just twirling on that uh, hand grip and gluing it in place DIY number two we're making a homemade whoosh ball this is for a two-person game you'll need six six foot strands of paracord two plastic straws, and a lighter and scissors. We cut the uh, straw in half, but I wanted to make sure that it was even, so measuring it and then I'll mark it with a pen for both pieces. Um, that way one end wasn't longer than the other. And these are just something I found in my, uh, my junk drawer. Uh, straws that I haven't used in a while and probably didn't want to use. So I use those as the handle grips. Four in all, you'll have two on each end. And now I found these balls at the a thrift store. And I don't know if they're practice golf balls or what have you, but you thread the two six foot pieces of paracord through and then thread it through each of the handles. Once you thread it through, then you're going to tie it into place and secure it. And all I did was double knot that, and then I burned the edge or the end of the paracord to keep it secure. same process is completed throughout um, the four handles that that way none of them will come loose and uh, they are adjustable as well for the hands that are holding the, um, the, the ends. I'll just fast forward this a bit. My apologies for not being in the center. Uh, so here we are, DIY number three. You'll see the finished product at the end. DIY number three is a crocheted water balloon. And I give the specific instructions for this. First, we start with a magic circle. You chain four, slip stitch it to the first chain. And then we double crochet eight into the circle. Uh, 
and close with a slip stitch. Okay, so here we are starting with the, the uh, chain four. Tighten that first stitch and then chain four. Slip stitch to the first stitch in the chain. And now we start with our double crochet, eight double crochet. Chain three counts as one double crochet. And then we do seven more double crochet into the magic circle. Now we're getting ready to slip stitch it to close in the magic circle and chain three. Now we're double crocheting in each stitch, two double crochet in each stitch. Sorry, my my uh, yarn got a little befuddled there, so I had to get it uh, untangled un, uh, in order to continue crocheting uh, the joys of yarn that's knotted inside the ball. Uh, so here we go again. We get started there. Two double crochet in each stitch. That gives us a total of 16 stitches around. So on that first one, we want to count the stitches and make sure we only have 16 stitches. So you'll see me counting these stitches out just to make sure that I didn't under uh, count or over count. It's very important to have 16 stitches. And then you slip stitch into the next, uh, next one. So I want to double check that count and make sure uh, that it's 16. And then we slip stitch and chain three to start the next row and that will be a single double crochet in each stitch all the way around for two consecutive rows that will make the belly of the balloon Continuing around, we have uh, not quite finished the first row, so we will have 16 single double crochets all the way around, uh, and then we will slip stitch to close that row. I really want to make sure that I have those 16 stitches so again I'm going to count each one individually all the way around before I complete my slip stitch. And we want it to be double crochet not single crochet.
slip stitch into that row and then the second single light layer of double crochet all the way around you change th chain three and then we are going to double crochet one double crochet in each stitch all the way around I'm having to work with the yarn and detangle it so we can work with it uh, the joy of, of crocheting and this particular yarn does tangle pretty easily now uh, we're starting that double crochet all the way around uh, making sure that the chain 3 counts as one of the 16 stitches all the way around getting to the end of this row and once again we are going to uh, double check and count our um, stitches to make sure we have 16 and then slip stitch to close that row we are going to chain three to start the next decreasing row uh, and making sure I'm making sure that the yarn is there so that I can keep going so chain three and then we're going to skip a stitch and then complete a double crochet in the second stitch from the chain that's a decreasing stitch so we'll have eight double crochet in this row skip a stitch and then double crochet in the second stitch skip a stitch double crochet in the next stitch you will have eight double crochet in this row slip stitching to close that row chain three and now you're going to do the same thing decreasing to four stitches in this row so you will count skip one stitch and then double crochet into the second stitch from the chain the chain does count as one stitch We slip stitch to the chain itself and then uh, we will do the balloon end chain two and then you'll do a two single crochet in each stitch across uh, to the end is very tangly at this point so having to work that out to complete the um, the end of the balloon these are great little um, treats for the kids for summertime they hold a lot of water and they are washable 
So you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch across to the end, and then you'll tie that off. stitch to the end, tie it off, and then we're going to work in that tail into the balloon itself with a darning needle. Now the darning needle will help us get into the, uh, into the yarn without fraying the yarn. This yarn is very hard to fray, but you want to tie it in so it does not come loose. Uh, especially if kids are playing with it so that you know the cats and the dogs don't play with it um, but it's a great fu fun summertime activity to do with the kids and grandkids I tie my ends in and I will double back on my stitch so that it is less likely to come undone. So you're gonna see this in just a second here and I'm backspacing that, going back and then turning it back on itself and then I'll cut that, that yarn to make sure that it does not come out. There we go. That's DIY number three. DIY, that is for the bat, the woosh ball, and the water balloon. All three projects together. Thanks for watching. And here's my bloopers.